Unit 4, we're going to talk about basically earth science, starting with plate tectonics. The goal is to describe the different changes and events that occur at the different types of boundaries, but in order to talk about plate boundaries, we have to know what the plates are. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the fact that we have a core, a mantle, and a crust, um, but lesser known terms are the asthenosphere and the lithosphere. So the lithosphere is basically the crust, with a teensy tiny part of the mantle. And the asthenosphere is the very upper part of the, the mantle. So basically, we, diff we use this as a, um, to talk about plate tectonics as opposed to the crust of the mantle because when we talk about the lithosphere and the asthenosphere, what we're talking about is um, how the, the, like, the hard, part of the crust is able to move around over the flowy part of the mantle. Um, so basically what happens is the all like this magma and um, just molten rock it heats up near the center of the earth and as it heats it it rises and that rising and falling of the molten rock as it cools down is pushing on the lithospheric plates. And so as they're being pushed around, that's what causes the differences in our continents. So I'm sure you've all seen picture Pangea. Um, it, we went from Pangea, like one giant supercontinent, to all of our little tiny continents because of plate tectonics. And all of them down to this, this movement, um, which we call convection, this movement of the asthenosphere causing the movement of the asthenosphere. So it's kind of like little pieces of paper floating on water. So it's the, the movement of the water that causes the little pieces of paper to move around, and it's the same thing here. So that is plate tectonics in a nutshell. There are two different types of crust. There's continental crust and oceanic crust. Continental crust is much less dense. Uh, it is made out of granite. Oceanic crust is much more dense and it is made out of basalt. The density difference is going to become important, so I hope you are listening. All right, first of all, we have convergent boundaries. Convergent boundaries, they converge, the two plates are coming together, and they result in mountains, island arcs, earthquakes, and volcanoes. There are three different types of convergent boundaries. First one is continental continental. So you have two continental crust ramming into each other. And when they do that, it's kind of like pushing sand together. All this sand it crumbles and then um, becomes a mountain. Um, examples you need to know for the AP exam are the Himalayas um, near India and China. And then Appalachian Mountains up here in Northeast America. Oh, I thought there was another example. I was wrong. Uh, okay, next one we have oceanic and continental crust. Oceanic crust, like I said, is much more dense. So because it's more dense, when they ram into each other, it's basic physics or chemistry or whichever science it is, that the more dense thing will always go down. And we see the same thing happen with these two continental or two lithospheric plates. The one that's more dense will subduct underneath the less dense one. When it goes downwards into the mantle, into the asthenosphere where it's warmer, that rock heats up, melts and becomes magma, and then it bubbles up to the surface as a volcanic or volcanic arc. So when we have when we have this boundary, we see two characteristic things. We see a trench uh, where that those plates are meeting, and then to the side, we see a volcanic arc, um, which typically forms the mountain range. So, if, like for example, the Cascade Mountains in Northwest America, and the Andes in South America. Oceanic and oceanic, we see subduction also happen, because um, typically, like there's usually one plate that's a little bit older than the other one, and that just is more dense because it's you know been compacted for longer. And then as that seduction occurs, um, we see the same thing happen. We see a trench. We see bubbling up to form magma. Um, this, though, because it's um, 
in the middle of the ocean, it produces little island chains. So, for example, Japan is an example you need to know. The Aleutian Islands in Alaska and the Solomon Islands um, down near Australia, New Zealand, and um, Papua New Guinea. All right, next one, we have divergent boundaries. Divergent boundaries are those that are going away from each other. This results in seafloor spreading, rift valleys, volcanoes, and earthquakes. An example you need to know, because it comes up everywhere, is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. That's all along the Pacific Ocean, one giant ridge where we have magma bubbling up. It forms new crust. As it cools down, it pushes the old crust away. And actually, we end up seeing on the other side of that plate is subduction happening with um, the continental plate. And so it's basically kind of like one giant conveyor belt. The magma rises up, cools, becomes crust. Over time, it gets pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed until it slams into another plate. And then it gets um, goes down into the mantle. And then over time, we'll bubble back up again. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, and the last one is transform boundaries. Transform boundaries are um, lit plates that are sliding past each other, and that results in earthquakes. Important one to know. Oh, no. Did I not put the map? Okay. Important one to know is the San Andreas Fault in California. Um, but we talked about that one in class, so I'm not too concerned. That's not in here because you're smart and you'll figure that out. All right, maps, if, or if we look at the plates on a map, we can see that the plate boundaries align really well with volcanoes and island arcs, earthquakes, um, and faults. It also helps us to see hot spots. So hot spots are special because they are not at a, um, I know I just went out of order, but this just works better. They're not at a plate boundary. So they're part or there where a part of the mantle is much closer to the surface. Um, so maybe like the lithosphere is a little bit thinner. And so it allows, um, allows this, ma or this magma to bubble up more easily and create volcanoes. And then those little volcanoes will create islands. Um, so for example, Hawaii uh, is, a, is a really good example of this because if we actually look at the age of the rock, found in these different islands, we find that it gets younger as we get closer to this hot spot. And that's because the hot spot doesn't move, but the plate does. So the plate is moving over this hot spot, and as it does, it creates islands. And those islands then get further away from that hot spot, um, and then more islands are created. So really important to know. And also really important to know that this is not caused by a plate boundary. It's so confusing, I know but it just, it just is. Um, the last essential knowledge is knowing how an earthquake is formed. Again, earthquake is formed next to, um, especially transformed boundaries, but really anywhere where you have these two uh, pieces of rock. And as they're moving across each other, they kind of get, like, stuck on each other. And then it's like they're pushing against each other and pushing against each other and storing up all this energy. And then it's one finally slides fast another just enough where it slips and then that slip was then like all that potential energy um, gets released into the nearby rock and then that's what we register as an earthquake so all that energy then uh, reverberating through the rock um, and making it quake. Cool. All right, now it's your turn to describe the geological changes and events that occur at convergent, divergent, and transformed plate boundaries.